Are you trying to pass your state test? Are you trying to learn about terms like risk pooling, law of large numbers, mortality and morbidity, adverse selection? Let's talk about that on this video and get you to pass that test. These concepts that we're going to cover today are risk pooling, law of large numbers, mortality and morbidity, adverse selection. Now, these terms come up on all of the different tests, life and health, life only, health only, on the property casualty side, general lines, personal lines, because this concept applies to all types of insurance. So let's go ahead and break into these little key points. Let's start with what is insurance? So insurance is really just a bucket of money. The nature of insurance is to accumulate some funds to cover some unknown, unforeseen future loss. So that we have what? So that financially we have enough money to cover that or fix that or take care of that by accumulating this money for that future loss. And that's all an insurance policy is, is just a way to accumulate that money to face those uncertain future losses. In other words, like I said, insurance is just a bucket of money. And the people that run those insurance companies are just what? They're just a bunch of bean counters managing that bucket to make sure that what? More money goes into the bucket than later on comes out of the bucket. Now, in order for that to work, it's based on two basic principles, risk pooling and law of large numbers. Let's handle risk pooling first. Risk pooling means we're going to spread the risk amongst a lot of different people, and that's going to keep the premium low for everybody. Here's an example. Suppose we have a club of a thousand people. And we want to make sure that if one of the members of the club passes away, we have enough money to cover the funeral expenses of that one person. Let's estimate it $10,000. So if you got a thousand people, we need $10,000. We just have to do what? Get everybody to chip in $10. It's one heck of a lot easier for a thousand people to all come up with $10 than it is for one person to come up with $10,000 all at once unexpectedly. Another example would be with auto policies. Statistics tell us that one out of every 240 car policies pays a claim in a given year. That means that if you didn't have a claim this last year, all the premium that you paid and all the premium that 238 other people paid, all paid for the one person that had the accident. Let me ask you this. If you get to the end of the year and you didn't have a claim, you didn't have any losses at all, does the insurance company send you your premium back? And of course, no, they don't because what? Your premium went to whoever that person was that had the accident. But what if that's the way it works? What if they did send you your premium back? Well, that would mean that the only people that are paying the premium are the people that actually had the car accidents, which means what? Well, if you have your car leased or financed, typically you have to carry 100, 300, meaning the insurance company is on the hook for up to $300,000. Remember, those people with the insurance company want to make sure that what? More money goes into the bucket than later on comes out of the bucket. So our premiums would have to be what? north of $300,000. So when I say low premiums, I mean really low compared to what they would be if we didn't have risk pooling. Now, risk pooling bleeds into a lot of different things in the material. For example, with group insurance, the reason that you have to have a natural group is that we want to make sure that everybody in the group is healthy. Because now that you understand the concept of risk pooling, could you have a health insurance company where you only covered sick people. The next concept is the law of large numbers. And that has to do with predictability. What do I mean by that? Well, that means that insurance companies need to be able to predict their losses so that they can accurately set the premiums. Remember the insurance company's got to once again, make sure more money goes into the bucket that comes out of the bucket. And in order to do that, they have to be able to predict the number of losses to set their premiums. The concept here is that we've got to get a lot of people into the group in order for that to work. What the law of large numbers says that we have to have a big enough group for these statistics to work out. What do I mean by that? If you flip a coin, what's the chances of that coin landing heads up? 50-50, of course. But let me ask you this. Is it possible to flip a coin and have it land heads up 10 times in a row? And the answer is it's absolutely possible. It's not likely, but it's absolutely possible because what? 10 flips is not enough. It's not a statistically large enough number for the law of large numbers to work out. But let me ask you this. If you flip the coin 10,000 times, then it's going to what? 
it's going to land on heads about 50% of the time. Well, that same thing, that same concept is true for insurance. We cannot predict who's going to pass away this next year, but based on the law of large numbers, we can tell you pretty accurately how many people inside the United States, for example, or maybe how many people inside of your state are going to pass away in the next year. And the larger the group, the number of people that's in the insurance policy, the more accurate those predictions. Now, when people take the test, they tell me, Brian, the thing about the test is that the questions are worded really differently. Well, you'll notice this last sentence I have here in bold. The larger and the more homogeneous the group, the more certain the mortality and morbidity predictions will be. Oh, my green dot's not working right. So what does that mean? Well, it means the same thing that I just said. It means that you got to get a lot of people in the group in order for those predictions to be accurate. Now, that sentence doesn't sound like all the stuff that I just said, but that's more how the questions on the test are going to be worded. How are you going to get used to that? The answer is you need to do lots and lots and lots of practice questions so that you can get used to the kind of questions that you're going to see on the state test. Now, of course, that brings up two new terms, which is mortality and morbidity. These terms absolutely will show up on your test, especially if you're taking, for example, the life and health test, you will definitely see these. They may even show up on the property casualty test. Now, what's the difference? Mortality has to do with death. Morbidity has to do with sickness. So mortality has to do with life insurance. Morbidity has to do with health insurance. If you speak one of the Romance languages, French, Spanish, this will be easy because mortality, the same Latin root for the Spanish or French word for death, morte or mort, I think. But if you don't speak one of those romance languages, right? What happens if you go see a superhero movie and the superhero can't die? Well, if the superhero can't die, they are immortal. If the superhero can die, then they're mortal, right? So mortal, immortal has to do with death. So mortality, same Latin root, has to do with death, which means it has to do with life insurance. Morbidity has to do with sickness, so that has to do with health insurance. All that comes back to this concept of adverse selection. So what's that? Well, adverse selection simply means getting too many of the bad risks, the people that have lots of car accidents, the people that are having health issues, right? The tendency for those type of individuals to seek insurance. So people that have those issues are more apt to try to get insurance. Therefore, it's easier for the insurance companies to sell policies to those people. And we want to make sure that we don't have too many of those in the group. Because like we talked about with the risk pooling, if we have too many of the drivers that have lots of accidents, if we have too many of the people that have health issues in the group, then there's not going to be enough money there to cover all the people that we need to cover. Remember, it takes 239 people who don't have claims to cover the one person who has a claim in a given year. Does it make sense? So that means that insurance companies must avoid adverse selection, which means they have to avoid getting too many of the high risk individuals in the insurance group or what we call the pool. Now, these basic concepts, once again, definitely can show up on the test. There's lots more that we're going to cover in those future videos. Keep an eye on it. Check our channel. We'll put some playlists together for you. Good luck in passing your test and let us know what we can do to help you. As always, you can come to mortonschools.com and check out our offerings. We offer classes, live classes and online classes for the entire United States in both life and health, property casualty, and the securities licensing. We'll have classes coming up on those as well. Let us know what we can do to help. Thank you very much.